Hey everyone, this is Lutz and today I'm going to show you how to set up and how to use this little friend right here, the Pi Pico W. So I'm going to use five chapters today and in the first chapter I'm going to explain you how to set up your Pi Pico W. In the second chapter I'm going to talk with you about the basics of the GPIO, how to set up the LED on board and in chapter 3 we're gonna start with some wireless activities and chapter 4 we're gonna talk about how to set up a web server on your Raspberry Pi Pico and in chapter number 5 I will show you how you can set up a web server which is running a website and has access to your GPIOs and also can read out the state of your GPIOs before we can start working with our Raspberry Pi W, we have to collect some software to work with it. The first thing what we need is an integrated development environment. And for this I'm using Tony because it's quite easy and recommended for Raspberry. So we just go to tony.org and download the software which is the correct one for your operational system. Uh, the next step, we have to go to the Raspberry Pi website and download those UF2 files. That's a bit complicated to figure out where it is, so I will give you the link in the description of the video that it's easier for you to figure out where it is. When you did this, you can connect your Raspberry Pi Pico to your computer and pushing the button which is on the PCB and then your computer will start to connect to your Raspberry Pi Pico here we copy just the UF2 file and afterwards we can install the Tony. When the Tony is installed you go to tools and then you hit options and here you go to interpreter and collect Raspberry Pi Pico and normally it should find the correct Pico without doing anything so you can just hit the OK button and if everything is working you see that it's here writing that it's connected to Raspberry Pi Pico W and here also you get the indication for your interpreter so this is more or less everything you need to start so we are done with the first chapter so before we start programming our Raspberry Pi Pico W we should check the new board layout or the pinout and here's something new with the onboard LED, so I will quickly show you how to use that one in the Pico Python code. So what we do is like always we just uh, say from machine import pin and additionally we just say from time import sleep because we just want to show that something is blinking. And then we say LED is a pin and now the new thing is that you have to type LED instead of a number and then we just say it's a pin out and then we just say LED on and then we sleep for a second and then we say LED off and then we can run the code and we say yeah we want to change it on the pico and give it a number the name led led okay i already had a led so led one and then it's running and yeah it's quite working after we did the led stuff we want to start with our network stuff and the first thing what we always want to do is if we want to connect to a network we firstly want to try if our client is working well so what we do is that we make a quick check if everything is working so we import the network and then we just configure a network interface and we will call this wireless LAN and then we just say network dot wireless LAN and then we configure that one as a station so here you have two opportunities you can choose this as a station so this is meaning that your interface is able to access to an access point or you can do it the different way around if you want to be the access point then you just give it the AP but for this tutorial we will stay with the station because we want to connect to an access point and 
then we have to activate the whole thing so we just type wireless LAN point activate and then we just say okay now scan for every access point which is available and then we just have to save that one wherever you like so we call it I would call a network scan and yes I will overwrite it and yeah that's quite simple so it's giving me directly the networks which are available and my cases are only two and both are mine so that's quite good and another thing we could do as a try as a beginning but here I always forget the program code and that's the reason why I copied it is to figure out the network address and this is just with this small library here and uh, I don't like the program command for doing this so that's the reason why I just copied it before it's part of the official documentation so you can also read it from there if you need it and then you just say run and after a few seconds you should get your wireless access points again and then you should get your MAC address and no way it's just ah now it's here seems like it didn't work for the access points I don't know why so now it's here with something interrupted maybe and um, yeah that's it now you have your access uh, now you have your MAC address if you need it for any purpose like you have a MAC block in your router and you need to enable it first so then it's here and yeah that was the first thing I wanted to show you in this chapter and then the next chapter we're going to start with this website stuff to set up a website on a Raspberry Pi it's a bit more complicated than just the examples before so that's the reason why I decided to upload the whole code to GitHub that you can directly download it from there and just get all the information you need from that video here and what we want to do in the first example is just to set up a website where we can set or unset or just turn on and off an LED from your browser and the way we do this is that we just ping our browser or just go there and just add some comments after the IP address for turning on your LED or turning off your LED so this is how the example works and yeah for this we need some software and what I'm doing here is that I'm just importing the network we have before I'm importing sockets and time and then I have some import for my network setting that makes me easier for making this video you can also directly set your SSID and your password here but for this video I don't want to show my wireless LAN password and then we just have to import from machine the pin what we just used for this LED stuff and this you know from the video from the chapter before so we just can directly go to the HTML to the HTML stuff this is what we see here so it's quite easy that we set up a website and here we have just a variable where we can set afterwards about the state of the LED and then we configure an LED pin in that case it's important that you don't use the one you have on your board because this pin is multiplexed with the wireless LAN adapter so it will not work that's the reason why I connected another one and yeah here is a bit of the wireless LAN stuff so what we are doing is that we want to set up a connection and that one has to be a bit more stable and that's the reason why we just added the, uh, a loop where we are trying it for some time if we fall out of the network and um, yeah here it's the same if we are connected we are just printing out connected and the state and the IP address that one is really important otherwise we cannot find it in our network and if that works we just um, yeah open a socket and just wait for the socket it's a TCP socket so that's the reason why we have that code here and then we are just waiting on the comment on the website 
and what is happening then is that if we have a connection or we are waiting here till we have a connection and if it's connected we are just printing that the client has connected and for this connection we get a request and then we can define or we can try to search where the request is coming from and that's the reason why we have to add to our address those lines here where we can put the LED on or off and then we just print out that it's on or off but this line I added here it's not part of the standard documentation because I don't like this what is happening now if you don't add this part to your IP address is that the request will not find anything and everything is just uh, resetting because we are falling out here we don't get a request uh, that's valid and then the code don't know what to do and everything is broken so uh, that's a bit annoying so that's the reason why I just added here an additional value and then we are checking for the state of the addresses so if LED on is in state 6 so then we print LED is on and or LED on and turn the LED on and set the state on the website for LED on and the opposite we do for LED off and yeah then what we are doing is that we add this state what we have here or here this we are adding to the variable where we defined in our HTML and this is our response and then we say and back this um, this HTML stuff here or this HTTP and then we send back our HTML and afterwards we close the connection and yeah this is uh, just an exception handling if something fails um, I could also add some um, expect expectations uh, for the status if the status is negative but yeah I just did it this way and then uh, the connection will be closed and this is quite important for your Raspberry Pi Pico because if you don't close the connection at the end it's still running even if you're out of your Tony connection so then you have to plug and replug your Raspberry Pico otherwise your library is running and it's not working anymore and yeah that's annoying so what we can do now is that we try it we just run the script at first and then it says it's listening to and then we can here just add this LED on and then it's turning on and we could also use LED off and then it's turning off and what I was mentioning before is if we just directly connect to the website because if you're like me and you get a new code and you directly want to try it before you read the manual then everything is broken because you're directly connecting to it and it doesn't make sense at all so this is how it works it's I don't like it as a user because I just have to type a lot and what I like to do is that I can push a button and it's just doing what I want on one website and I don't want to use some special comments where I have to add anything here and there. That's not what I want and that's not what I like and that's the reason why I made the final chapter for this video where I'm showing how we can do it in a comfortable way and that will be the next chapter. In the last chapter I'm going to show you how you can set a website like this that you have some LEDs or some pins whatever you like and you have a button where you control it directly and it's changing its state and then you have here the update button where you can read back the pin state as well and yeah that's how it works I think that's a lot more comfortable so um, I give you the explanation how it works and also you find the code for it in the github so what I'm doing here is uh, the same like I did before for this video I'm using two LEDs and um, 
Here I'm programming the website and what I did or what I changed is that I have written a function and the function is able to read out the state of the LEDs and then I created some table and here in the table I have some button and the button is called toggle LED and it has one or two as a op, as a value which it gives out or it, which it gives to the script and the script then just open the connection what I showed you in the last example before so what it's doing is that it's just connecting to the same IP address with the extension of LED and just the variable we give them and um, yeah at the end we have an update button because the state is reading out here and I just give it in when the website is created so what I need to do when I change the state of the pin is that I have to reload it there are probably other ways how you can implement it but for showing you how it's working and how you can use it on your own I think that's quite enough and yeah what we do in the rest of the code is more or less everything the same but um, I just changed here the request that I just say okay toggle just LED 1 or toggle LED 2 and yeah then we just send back the website which we are creating in the function I was showing you before and yeah that's a whole code so I think that's a quite better solution than the one which is in the official documentation and I think it's quite more usability or the usability is quite better so I hope you liked it and if you want to see more of my videos I would be glad if you give me a thumb up and yeah, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.